Welcome everybody, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. I'm making a video for you all uh, this evening that I, I've never really talked about the subject, and that has to do with the badge or the logo and, uh, of a sewing machine, and specifically I'm talking about the Singer. This is argu arguably one of the most famous logos in sewing machine history, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about it. Not not a lot is uh, mentioned, I don't think, but we'll we'll talk about it today. Um, many of you who have vintage sewing machines, or maybe you're looking for some, you might you may not even paying attention to this because it's not always easy to read uh, what's on here. Normally, people see, of course, the decals uh, that will say Singer or whatever brand of machine you've got. But I wanted you to see this because. It's kind of interesting. It talks a lot. It talks a lot about, you know, how Singer went to market. You know, how did they market their product? And uh, uh, there's a lot of symbolism in history here. So we'll we'll dive in. I'm going to zoom in for you all, and I believe I have some good light here today. Sometimes the time of day really determines the quality of the light, and I want to get in even closer for you all because. Some of the detail on this will, will be a lot easier for you to see if I zoom in and maybe change my angle here. Bear with me. I'm going to give you guys hopefully an even closer up, close up, a closer view. Here we go. Okay. When you zoom in on one of these, it's kind of interesting. Um, this, of course, is uh, one of the oldest of the symbols of the Singer uh, company. In fact, it says here, the Singer Manufacturing Company, or CO, and underneath it says trademark. So what do you have here? What exactly is their trademark? Well, if you look, this little uh, vertical piece, and this is a three-dimensional, I, I wanted this kind of light so you guys could see, it's very three-dimensional. You can feel uh, it's a uh, you know, it's, there's a texture to this thing, particularly of this little piece. Now, from a distance, it might look like an ear of corn, but it's not. This is, of course, an old-style shuttle. Uh, on a loom, when you're, when you're we weaving cloth, you would, of course, have a shuttle. Uh, this particular shuttle is used because some of the earliest sewing machines uh, used what, what was called a vibrating shuttle bobbin system, okay? And it looked like this, and it's not surprising because if you've ever seen a, you know, a hand loom, you'll see shuttles that look like this. They kind of look like a, I don't know, it's as if, it's kind of hard to describe exactly. They kind of look sort of like a, a stretched, bullet-shaped canoe. <laughs> That's the closest thing I can get, uh, closest description. But you'll notice... Well, I don't think it's going to make any sound here, but there's a texture. They even have a very fine texture. When I put my fingernail there, it actually, uh, I can feel it. And of course, it's symbolizing the thread that would have been wound on, um, uh, on the, onto the bobbin. And let's see, I believe right here, this looks like a spool. I believe that's what that is. It looks like a spool. And then of course, there's an S right, that goes like that, which stands for singer, and then there's a needle, here's the top of the needle, down here is the I, and uh, of course it's connected to the S, maybe that's thread, and then the rest of this looks like, you know, some sort of classical laurel, laurel wreath uh, piece or, or olive branch, who knows, some sort of classical plant thing you often see on emblems, and then here, very important, is uh, uh, these are rivets. They would literally take, this, this piece is made of, of, of metal of some kind, I don't know the exact metal, and then it was riveted to the cast iron body of the machine. And, you know, that's really uh, sort of telling of the way companies went about making things. Uh, you know, they were, really wanted to, to impress that their machine had quality, and yes, this is, this is one of the 201s that's waiting for my rescue. And right now it's kind of dusty, but dust never hurt anything. That'll, it'll clean up well when we're done. Uh, now I want to show you what would have been, this by the way, would have been in the 1870s. This is when Singer 
uh, trademarked this particular logo and they would keep this. They have a number of logos that they, they used in different types of advertising and marketing, but uh, this is the one they used on their home machines and they would use this for quite a long time. This is again, 1870s. Now the next badge that some of you may have seen would come along later. It looks a little bit smaller than the one I just showed all of you. Let's see if we can turn this and get a little bit better lighting on there for you. And now you'll see that, uh, I'm gonna zoom in and you will see when I zoom, that this particular design is uh, interesting if, if for no other reason that it has this band on the outer edge. And I believe not only did they shrink the badge, but they shrank the, uh, the main uh, emblem and logo, which is, by the way, it looks to be uh, the same as the one I showed you before, only now it looks a little smaller and it's still three-dimensional. It doesn't pop out as much as the other one did. And of course it has this uh, lovely little black banding around it. <clears throat> And these are all simply uh, uh, part of the, the design of the, of the pattern here, but there are two um, rivets. Of course, this one, just like the other one, was riveted. And it's kind of funny because these smaller little dots almost look like rivets. I don't know if that was the intention of whoever designed this. Of course, someone would have designed it for Singer. So let's see if we can get, get zoomed in there and let you guys take a look. So again, you've got the same uh, original design or close to it. And then of course this black band. Now this, this design would come along in the 1950s and it would last for 10 or 15 years or so. While I'm on the subject of the 50s though, this little video of uh, emblems or logos would not be complete without covering this one. Now sometimes if you see a machine advertised and there's a picture of it online, you'll see a dark ring and you might, you might be looking at the one I just showed you with the black banding. Or if you look closely, a little more closely, you will actually be looking at a centennial badge. This of course is what, <clears throat> what is referred to as the Singer Centennial Badge. And this was, um, this was created and applied to machines because Singer was celebrating in 1951 their 100th anniversary. That really tells you something about just how old sewing machine business is. I mean, because that's like 70 years ago now when they were doing this celebration. So, you know, it's about 170 years ago that Singer was founded. I think that's kind of interesting that, uh, that, that, that the whole industry is that old, right? It's one of those legacy industries. In any case, Singer had the anniversary coming up and they wanted to make a big deal of it and they did. It was a huge marketing thing for them. And they spent for at least a year, I suspect it may have been a year and a half, where they would take machines in their production lines and they would rivet this special badge to machines that they were trying to, um, that they were trying to sell. Now, they use this curiously, not only, not only on their domestic machines, but even on their industrial machines, which I find kind of curious because it's hard to imagine a factory, you know, it's hard to imagine that a factory would, would buy a machine based on that. Maybe they weren't, but for whatever reason, Singer did it. I'm gonna to try to get it centered here in, my, in the lens so you guys can see it. Let's get that to zoom in, there we go. So. They have this huge anniversary, this big deal, and Singer starts putting these badges on their machines. Now, uh, what they noticed is that their sales picked up. It was, it was a successful marketing message for whatever reason, and uh, they actually ended up selling more machines. And so they kept putting these on more and more of the machines. That's why I think, I kind of think they probably they were celebrating their centennial year, but I think they kept you know, adding some badges there because the demand was high. I don't blame them. Uh, now, one of the things that's interesting, I suspect this particular 201 that you're looking at, and this one, this is a 201 I'll be featuring in a, in a future video uh, because it was an estate find. Uh, one of the things about it is this would have been built uh, either late 1950 or 
sometime in 1951, I suspect they were going to build up their inventory anticipating an increase in sales. And so um, uh, this machine would have been made in 1951, or it could have even been a late 1950 model. Because mechanically, this 201 is no different than any other 201 from the same year, other than the badge. So if you're if you if you are looking for or coveting a centennial singer, just know that mechanically it functions no differently. So it's not like you're going to get extra performance or anything. However, I have to say that it is um, it is a, a thing that drives collectability, and it's not because they're super rare. Uh, some models they were probably used on more than others. I can tell you that the Singer 201s, the Featherweight 221s the Singer 66, the Singer 15, the Singer 99, um, and even the Singer 127 models that used a, those are the ones that used a, um, uh, what was called a vibrating shuttle. And uh, that's a piece of fabric I have. Of course, this is the 201. And as, as all sewing machines have their bobbin plates, of course, the 127 models, they have uh, you know, a long opening with these, this, this two section plate that goes this way. Um, and they use an entirely different shuttle system. And I suspect that's where the original, uh, logo design came from. They even put it on those. Now, one thing I would mention to you all while we're on the topic of the Centennial badges is sometimes you get a machine that's very clean like this one. And even though I will be uh, oiling and, and buffing and shining the paint finish, I would strongly suggest to you all that if you get one of these machines that has this badge, be sure, do not clean it, do not scrub it, don't even put sewing machine oil, which is you know certainly safe for the painted uh, areas of your machine. But these, these logos <clears throat> for the Centennials uh, were were created with a process for, for which I don't have the details. There are different ways to embed enamel paint into a, a finish or in, onto metal like this. You know, jewelry and some hardware makers have used um, processes in the past called cloisonne, but I don't even think that's what this was. I suspect that uh, a layer of blue lacquer may have been applied here. I, I, again, I can't give you the exact detail. What I can tell you though, is that don't ever put any cleaner whatsoever. No alcohol, no soap, nothing. Uh, in fact, I tried cleaning when I had one machine like this once where it had, and I think it had just old oil and you know, so <clears throat> it was soiled and it was darkened. And I thought, well, I'll just take sewing machine oil and I'll clean it. Well, I wouldn't do that <laughs> because it caused some of that gorgeous blue color to fade. And that was with the oil. If you use a cleaner, I've seen them where people have literally, they've gotten, not, not intentionally, but they've ended up losing or damaging the blue section. And that's what really adds the value. So if you want to protect the value of your machine, you can clean the rest of it, everything around it, right on the paint painted sections with oil is, is normally what i suggest but I basically i tell people if you have a centennial badge uh don't touch it <laughs> just leave it alone because it it's really uh un what unfortunately it's delicate in terms of the paint this one's gorgeous and i'm really excited to see it there were a few other uh badges that singer had done in the past and actually i think sometime in the 1930s or the 50s um they would have done uh, commemorative logo badge, badge models to celebrate things like world fairs, right? Um, sometimes world fairs, if you go back far enough, were called exhibitions, you know, like the Chicago exhibition or whatever. And they would do special versions. And usually those for Singer most often had a red band. Uh, this table's got to have a, a new base on its foot um, put on. That's why it's rocking. But they would use a red band sometimes. Again, it was just a color to get your attention to say, hey, this is special. Uh, Singer wasn't the only company that did this. Uh, they had, of course, they had their special badge. Some of you may have a white rotary from the 1939 World's Fair or the 1964 World's Fair. Um, because uh, actually, 
for the 64 white had a, they had not, uh, they had gotten rid of the rotaries and they were making their um, 15 class machines in Japan. The point being, companies would pay, you know, they were sponsors of these events and they would pay for the right to use something like, you know, a World's Fair or an exhibition as, hey, this is the, you know, they were celebrate the World's Fair and we're going to have a special edition of our product. And I know that may seem kind of odd. You may like, why would they, why would they do that? You have to remember that a World's Fair was a major event in the world. It was almost like, you know, Olympics in a way. Uh, they only happened so often. They were huge endeavors and they got tons of press. So the PR that surrounded a World's Fair, the light around that publicity was so bright, companies would pay not only to advertise, but they also would pay to, uh, to have some mentioning of the event on their product, which I think is kind of curious. So again, uh, if you find a Centennial Badge machine, you may, you may uh, end up having a machine that's worth, I don't know, in, in my markets, anywhere from 50 to $75 more just for the badge. Uh, again, I, th there's no functional difference, but some people enjoy that. They like having that. Um, I even had a Singer 66 once in the crinkle finish, and it had one of these badges on it. So I think Singer realized just how many machines they were selling and how much interest there was in the, in the Centennial, and I think they ended up expanding it, putting on quite a few machines. Uh, so we have one more to take a look at. Now, some of you may recognize this machine from one of my other videos. This is the Singer 185J, uh, and it's in that cute little pistachio green color. I call it little pistachio. It's a little powerhouse. Um, now, this machine was made. You can always check serial numbers, but I actually uh, uh, know that this machine was made in 1958. And... By the 50s, Singer had updated their logo once more. And this was one of the very last metal uh, trademark you know, symbols that Singer would put on their machines. And if we zoom in, what you're going to notice is that the badge itself is actually not riveted. The badge is embossed. Uh, that's the word I couldn't find before. Uh, the, the, the actual badge logo is embossed in a metal plate that, of course, is used for um, the, stitch, the stitch length lever and uh, as well as the back tacking. I have it up so you guys can see the badge without it being obscured. But this is interesting because it's still embossed. There's still a texture to it. And of course, the, the, the plate for the lever is itself is what is attached to the machine. But I want to zoom in for this one. It's, uh, it's actually a, a really interesting design. And let's see how much, how much clarity we can get zooming in. There. And this, of course, says Singer Sewing Machines. It doesn't say Singer Manufacturing, even though, of course, that was the company. And you have the oval, you have this banding design, which is all in this sort of gold color. You have the S is red, and the, the lettering inside the S is gold. So it's done very, fairly small scale. But the, the, the thing that's really most unique here is the fact that you have sort of a silhouette in green of a woman sitting at a sewing machine sewing away. Now, if you ever look at Singer advertising material from the past, uh, whether it was in signage, they used to make the uh, companies used to have signs that were called flanges, and they were basically porcelain coated steel signs. If you ever find an original, they're worth quite a lot of money, they're gorgeous, um, because they don't lose their color. <clears throat> They were uh, porcelain coated. Now, uh, one of the things that they would do is they would take these giant red S letters, and very often these were the, uh, the these were this is the design of those logos that were used again on signs that would hang outside a, a dealer window. And Singer even had these stained glass windows with their, you know, designs. So the S that you're seeing here was not a new design. It was sort of an adaptation, adaptation 
of some of the earlier Singer promotional uh, advertising, and then it was int basically introduced and worked into the badge, which is kind of interesting. You can go back and look at Singer archives. Uh, you can pull these things up online, and you will see uh, old signs from all over the world, many of the countries where Singer was selling things, and they used the giant red S, and over time they would have a different, you know, a picture of a different woman in a different machine sewing away. Sometimes it was a treadle, later electric, but again, this is a, a good example of um, basically companies really branding their machines, and if you ever see a Singer uh, logo, it won't tell you exactly which model normally, but it will give you an idea of the era. So you have kind of an idea. If you don't know and you don't have, you can't look up the serial number, you can tell, uh, you can guesstimate when it might have been made. Now that earlier one, the first one I showed you, they had that one for a long time. So that's not gonna be a very accurate predictor of age, but, um, but I just thought this was kind of interesting to take a look at. And again, the care that they used to give to something like their logo today, uh, you know, most companies, you know, they, they, uh, uh, if they put a logo on, I think Singer still does, it's usually just a painted logo or it's used with some sort of dye. Um, and, you know, they don't really do real logos anymore. Just to give you an example, um, let's see if I can show if this will pick up for you guys. Uh, there's a dishwasher that's sitting right next, right, right beyond my camera. And I'll zoom in, all right? And uh, notice it says Whirlpool on it. And that is basically uh, some, some form of ink or paint that is applied to the plastic. And that's it, you know, that's what you get. Uh, so, you know, in the old days, even companies like Whirlpool and others used to put, you know, big fancy, uh, they used to put big fancy uh, uh, emblems and logos on their products. So, uh, I don't know too many that do that anymore. Anyway, if any of you have any comments or uh, ideas to share on this subject, let me know. I just thought I wanted to talk about these because many of us, particularly with singers, have been staring at these logos forever. And uh, you may or may not have noticed that the logos had changed over time. And if you've never looked closely in good light, you may not have even known what that big uh, symbol on the older emblems was four, but no, it's it's not an ear of corn. It is a sh it is a shuttle, wound with thread, and uh, kind of a beautiful symbol and a and a reference to the past. Anyway, I hope all of you enjoyed this. I thought it, I hope it was useful. Uh, it was one of those things that maybe it's the answer to a question no one has ever asked me. But um, uh, if if nothing else, you will know that if you have a centennial badged machine, you want to be treating that gorgeous blue color very delicately. I suspect this one may be the same. I have never had issues, but again, be gentle with stuff like that. The machines are tough, but I think their emblems are, uh, well, at least they're metal. But um, anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Stay tuned. I've got more videos still coming, and uh, we will see you next time. Take care.